This is James Com, the guy on the bike. Welcoming back our worldwide viewership. And we're here at 529 West 20th Street. We're going to run up to the Elizabeth Harris Gallery and we're going to take a look at some new paintings by Thornton Willis. second show here up at Elizabeth Harris. The title of this show is Lattices. And if you look at his horizontal and vertical structures on these paintings, I guess you can see where he got the title. If you're not familiar with the work of Thornton Willis, you would probably not realize what a huge step this is for him to change his format as much as he had for these paintings. This piece is Gotham Rhythms. It's 106 by 65 inches. Probably one of the bigger paintings in the show. Thornton is, I guess, maybe one of the dying breed. He's a real true believer in the whole idea and aesthetics of abstract expressionism. Here's a wonderful selection of some little paintings. I'll take a little look around the second gallery. It's really quite a bit of work he's got here. This really gives you a chance to see the kind of uh, juicy and uh, rich colors that he's working on. I believe this piece is called Trellis in the Sun, 61 by 34 inches. Let's see if we can get some of this paint quality. Like I was saying, one of the great things about a painter like Thornton is that he's been painting for so long and he is able to put that paint on without being self-conscious. And uh, it's got a kind of intuitive, natural color sense that is amazing. And it's very subtle. This little shadow line at the bottom of the orange is a good example of the kind of little tweaks he's playing with. I think probably about 40 years ago or so, Thornton dedicated himself to kind of carrying on the, the New York school. It's a very rich paint surface. Working on this stuff in a very strong, I guess even you could say a manly way of applying the paint. hasn't changed course. This piece is Summer House. 68 by 43. You know, in certain ways, this also might relate to some of the work by Mary Heilman, but I think if you look at the surface, you can really see that Thornton achieves a very, very assertive surface, as opposed to Mary's more soft and atmospheric paint surface. We've got a little ding here in the blue. This conversion this is also a very impressive piece. It's about 97 by 70. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this might have been the beginning of his whole lattice series. This one has a little bit more complex structure there. Get up and look 
you can see some of the subtleties here in his pedimenti. Also, you might not be able to see these, see it from a distance, but a lot of these pieces have really got a lot of painting going on underneath the surface. A lot of transparent and opaque overlays of pigment. Well, that shot of blue is really something. We're talking with the artist Thornton Willis here. Congratulations, it's really great to see this new series of paintings. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you uh, sort of changed your, your format a little bit and got to the, the lattice compositions. Well, these paintings are kind of recycled. An idea that started really in the 60s. It's just uh, basically uh, about vertical and horizontal arrangement. And uh, it's the simplest kind of format, I guess, we can work off of for abstract or for abstract painting. And um, I, I'd gotten very into a very complex body of work that I was right, doing with the just forms. Yeah. And then reached a point where I, I, I felt like um, reaching out for something simpler. And well, for someone like you that has worked uh, on a body of work like that for several years, was there any anxiety about sort of changing. I know New York is a place where people like consistency and they sort of feel if an artist has a particular style or signature, they just think they should stick with that and keep cranking oh, I never, out forever. It never occurred to me that, that New York was a place where people liked consistency. You never heard that, huh? No, I didn't. Uh-huh. Okay. The other thing I was uh, interested in, I, uh, I noticed in the press release they said that you actually saw an exhibition of uh, students of Hans Hoffman when you were younger down in, was it Alabama? Oh yeah, I was quite a bit younger. I was and in, that was sort of what got you? I was in my 20s and I was a student at Auburn University uh, studying architecture. And I saw a traveling exhibition that um, was circulated out in New York of, of work of some of Hoffman's uh, more advanced students and uh, uh, a painting or two of his own. And uh, along with another show or two that traveled through there about that same year, uh, I got, became very interested in abstract painting. And that made you decide to take up the brush and become a painter? That made me decide to take up the brush and become a painter. How long did it take you to move to New York after that happened? Um, eight years, seven, eight years. The other thing that always impressed me was that uh, you're someone that had a real, real dedication and a real belief in abstract expressionism and you really haven't... Uh, you haven't wavered in your, your dedication to that. I haven't given up on it, no. I, I, I think it's still the most advanced place painting can be. Painting is what it is in, in a society at any given time. But right now, the most advanced place painting can be is, is uh, working out of that, those ideas. That, and it reached some kind of... Um, uh, in terms of the ideas, I suppose, in the 50s, in the 50s. I don't think things have changed a lot since then. There's been a lot of experimentation, but it all sort of comes back to a certain kind of direct way of painting. And you still believe that? That's kind of the difference between you and me. You're a modernist and I'm a postmodernist. I guess I have a little little cinema cynicism has creeped in there. Some I don't know what post I, I don't understand what postmodernism is. You'd have to explain that to me. Well, that's the difference between the true believer and the person that sort of has his doubts anyway. Oh, I see. If, if you have, oh, I have doubts, but not about painting. Personality and spirit of the individual making them makes the painting more or less interesting, I suppose. But it's always just you know, what it is. So, okay. materialistic. Well, thank you, that you try to inject spirit, some spiritual content into. Thanks for your comment, Thornton. You're welcome. All right, thanks. Good to see you. This is James Calm reporting on Thornton Willis here at the Elizabeth Harris Gallery on West 20th Street in Chelsea. Thanks, Kate.